All right, everyone, welcome. This is End Time Church. Uh, I'm Christopher Manti, and we've got a whole bunch of folks ready to serve the Lord tonight and to fellowship together from all over the world, truly all over the world. Uh, fellow Pastor Jake McCandless is here. Say hello, Jake. Hey, Chris. Hello, everyone. Uh, you know, it's a, bit, a special night if we're, we've got the matching church, you know. That's why I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the official night as we're trying the Facebook Live thing. So we're, we'll get the teamwork looking, Just going. Robbie, put, we missed you on the memo, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, those, a rebel. those musicians, you we can't ever rein in them. Yeah, you, you can't rein in those musicians. <laughs> no, not at all. All right. Well, I am super psyched, actually, to do this uh, on Facebook, finally, because um, it's kind of the, like the Wild West out there so uh please say hello we should have uh staff members uh, ready to uh assist you if you have any questions or comments or concerns uh i'm gonna just make sure that's on there and working looks like it is excellent okay so again just make a comment below uh renee is here which is awesome and so tell your friends just share this out tweet it out whatever you got to do and I'm going to make sure we're on the website here. So, uh, Jake, uh, for folks who obviously who've never been here before, don't know what this is all about, uh, what is End Time Church? What would you tell them? It's a church with the end in mind. It's the, that's the catchphrase we use, but it, I mean, it's really something. It's birthed out of the, in the spring, we lo officially launched in the summer and we really are connected really internationally, which is amazing. Uh, but we're a church driven uh, by the focus, one, that we understand the times that we live in. Uh, we, we believe those things need to be taught, uh, but not just to call us to head knowledge, but to call us to action, uh, to call us back to that church that we find in Acts. And so that's what we're trying to do, uh, connected in a unique way. Uh, but it, it's been a beautiful ride so far, hasn't it, Chris? Yes, it has. <laughs> Extremely. Uh, God is in it. I mean, that's as simple as I can put it um, for something so new and experimental in a way. You know, it's I don't think it's ever really been tried to do things um, purely like this. A lot of churches have the online component, but it's never been the central meeting place. And uh, but that's is part of the um, idea behind it would, that there would be no uh, physical location, uh, that this would be a place to meet up um, no matter where you are and no matter what. That's meet. really what sets us apart. I mean, there was a lot of churches that are doing online services, which are great. Uh, but what we, we saw is oftentimes when you're part of that campus, the online campus, you feel like just uh, an extra. You feel like you're in the peripheral. And so we wanted to be an online main campus focused body uh, that way that Everyone who comes into our service, who is a part of our Bible study, who is a part of this, this church, and we're using the word church. And I know for many, when you say online church, it, it just totally blows people's minds, and, and it's some wild uh, thoughts with that. And I, I had to really come get warmed up to the idea and when Christopher first shared the idea with me. Uh, but we use the word church because it's not just about a lesson. It's not just about a message. It's not just a video that you're going to watch on YouTube. Uh, we are looking for interaction. And the thing that we've really focused on is engagement, uh, which is why we've been using the online church platform uh, so we can have those chat engagements. We can do this on Facebook, so I hope you're at uh, catching us there on Facebook, and, and feel free to jump in and, and chat. Uh, but we've opened it up because we want others to find out what's going on in the above-ground, underground church. Amen. And by the way, we are fully functional uh, on Facebook and on our website, so if you're watching at endtime.church, live page welcome to you shalom thank you for doing that and for taking advantage of that opportunity because uh, we do want to let folks know that we do have a website by the way uh, and we do have a, a fully documented about page we have videos about um you know everything <clears throat> about what we're doing here uh, who we are and this is tonight this is uh, filling in maybe a little bit of the blanks as far as um, who we are actually as leaders so we felt in this time that we want to do this. Now, Jake, if you didn't know, by the way, is an award-winning author, that's God's honest truth, uh, is of Spiritual Prepper. If you've never heard of the book before, I highly recommend it. You can get it on Amazon or, or wherever, hopefully on his own page here. Uh, spiritual Prepper hey, is- speaking of yeah. that. Yes, we so, have news, breaking so No news. one's heard this. This is the first place to say this. Sweet. It has been in the works since back in August. 
uh, Christopher, you've been asking me where, where can you get the book? And uh, so you've been, we have it there in the end time church. We have it at the wings of the Eagle. Uh, but Wednesday at midnight, we, we're launching spiritual prepper store, spiritual prepper store.com. Uh, really stoked about it. It's been in the works for quite a while, uh, but it will actually probably be li- It's going to be live tomorrow. And so if you want to check it out, spiritual prepper store.com, wow. uh, the store is called spiritual preppers and spiritual warriors, which I think describes our congregation. Uh, but the, uh, the hope is, is so uh, this coming out this fall, I have a follow up book called Spiritual Warrior, uh, because it's not just about preparing and being ready, but it's about marching on. And that's what we're doing through End Time Church. And so uh, I guess that's a shameless plug there, but that opens mm-hmm. finally have a place to, uh, <laughs> to send folks to for the book. Bless the Lord. Wow, that sounds awesome, dude. I'm excited now. Okay. <laughs> and you can... in a month or so, uh, I. Hmm. We are going to have seminars on there, and one of those is Christopher's class, The End Time for Beginners, which if you look at the list of what he, the content he has, uh, my response after, after looking through it and seeing it was, this was more end time stuff than I got in, got in seminary. And so I encourage folks to check that out and just to see the format. Uh, you've got a free course, uh, The Ten Signs of Jesus' Return, and so very good way to just check it out and see what's going on but it's really overwhelming i, I know some some folks who have tried it out and so and that's going to be on the store as well as uh you're on the wings of the eagle store wow fantastic yes you, please it's it's exhaustive that's the was the point behind it was so many folks were so confused they're afraid they don't know where to find this information they don't know where the bible talks about this that the other thing it's uh, i'm just like you know what i'm just gonna lay it all out here it is book by book by book chapter by chapter uh, verse by verse, and then tying them all together. How do they fit with each other? How does this grand drama that God has orchestrated, uh, how is it going to pan out? And luckily, he's told us. So that's what that course is all about. So thank you for that. And by the way, uh, if you are led whatsoever, we are a church like any other. So if uh, you feel the uh, unction of the Holy Spirit to make a tithe or offering, you can go to endtime.church, click on donate, secure form there. You can do uh, any credit card, debit card, or uh, check, even e-check if you're in America. Um, it's real sim- simple and easy. Um, right away, you can get it done, and that's it. So that's available to you. Also available to you for free is an app. Um, we had this commissioned just a few months ago, and we're up to, I just checked today, 320 users, many of which are international. So th- this is not um, an American thing for sure, because we don't want it to be. Uh, but if you go to the, the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store for your Android device, so if you any type of phone, tablet, iPad, whatever, you can go grab this app completely free. Just type in endtime.church and it'll pop up for you. Free download. And there's tons and tons of stuff, I must say, uh, in there already. And we're just really getting going with that. So it's very, um, we're very excited about the fact that people are being are using it and are receptive to it and i think it's going to replace on the app wouldn't you say only about half of those who who got the app are have already been a member of our church i mean it's connecting new folks from around the world i would say less yeah yeah yep for sure you you take what we've i mean how how this congregation has already grown and just with the introduction of the app we've connected with so many more people and we're gonna be doing more and more on that app yeah amen that's the idea well i mean Honestly, I think the vision for that is just to replace all these, you know, we don't have the greatest allies, okay? There's kind of antichrist forces out there in YouTube and Twitter land and and even Facebook, sorry. Um, so you know, this we're is- about to get cut off now. Yeah, that Way was go, the end Chris. of that session. Um, <laughs> but this is the, the vision of it is to replace all that. So you don't need to go to a thousand places. You don't need to, you know where to find it. It's a for Christians by Christians. That's what we're saying. And that's the bottom line of it. it. Nobody owns your data. Okay. It's just the church. We're, we're a church. We, that's it. There's no third party involved. So uh, definitely encourage you to, to go check that out. And that's pretty much it. So again, wh- why are we here? The real short version is for three main reasons. If you're not in any type of fellowship, for whatever reason, you don't have any around you. You don't know any other Christians. You're maybe in a nation that's persecuted or things like that. This is the place for you in time church. If you're, in a congregation, or maybe you um, are frustrated or the lack of the proper end time stuff or the uh, concentration on Israel not being there or the the ignorance about Islam or whatever the case is, we're here for you as well. We don't want to, you know, we want you to be part of a local congregation. I am, I'm I'm on the pastoral team of a local church as well, but 
point is we're here for you. Okay. And then finally for pastors themselves to network together, those who know something's coming and they got to prepare their folks uh, for them to get together and to utilize uh, this church system and network that we're building as well. All right. So that's end time church in a nutshell. So if you are ready and if you folks uh, down in worshipville already, we are ready to go to the throne room, my friend, Robbie. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. We're so glad that you can join us. If you are a visitor, we uh, offer you a special welcome and uh, just ask that you would um, just pay attention to the Lord and interact with one another. And, uh, you know, though we have miles that separate us, we're one in the spirit of God. And so uh, joining with me tonight, I have a uh, special guest, uh, Christy Bush. Say hello, Christy. Um, we uh, are actually on the worship team in our local congregation here. And unfortunately, uh, Leah has been sick over the past week. And um, so we definitely just ask for prayer over her and um, prayer over us as we lead tonight. So let's open up in prayer. Father, Ava, we come before you. Thank you so much for this opportunity to sing to you, to offer you our thanks, offer you our, our gratitude, Lord, not just for all that you've done for us, but who you are. And we just pray that every lyric that is sung out of our mouths, out of the mouths of all those who are here with us that desire to sing with us, to lift our voices to you, that they would not be empty or in vain, but that they would truthfully and truly be offered up to you in gratitude and thanks. We ask these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Holy you are holy you are be like your son Yeshua you call us to be holy let's sing no wonder the angels no wonder the angels adore you no wonder creation bows before you no wonder the angels cry holy day and night night and day day and night night and day no wonder the angels adore you no wonder creation bows before you. No wonder the angels cry holy. Day and night, night and day, day and night, night and day. No wonder the angels adore you. No wonder creation bows before you. No wonder the angels cry holy. Day and night, night and day, day and night, night and day, holy, you are holy, you are holy, holy you are, holy you be holy, you are holy, Abba, you are holy.
peace, bringing it all to peace. Let's sing that together. Peace, bringing it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break. At your name still, call the sea to still. The rage in me to still every way. At your name, Yeshua, Yeshua. You made the darkness tremble, Yeshua, Yeshua. You silence me, Yeshua, Yeshua. You made the darkness tremble, Yeshua, Yeshua. Sing, breathe, breathe, and call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing once again. I will praise Yeshua, Yeshua. You make the darkness tremble, Yeshua, Yeshua. You silence fear and doubt, Yeshua, Yeshua. You make the darkness tremble, Yeshua, Yeshua. Sing it again, Yeshua, Yeshua. You make the darkness tremble, Yeshua, Yeshua. You silence me, Yeshua, Yeshua. You make the darkness tremble, Yeshua, Yeshua. Your name is light. Your name is light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is life forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is life that the shadows can't deny. Your name can I be overcome? Your name is life forever lifted high. Your name can I be overcome? Amen. Sing Yeshua. Yeshua, Yeshua. You make the darkness tremble, Yeshua, Yeshua. You silence so fear and doubt, Yeshua, Yeshua. You make the darkness tremble, Yeshua, Yeshua. Yeshua, you make the darkness tremble, Yeshua, Yeshua. You silence me, Yeshua, Yeshua. You make the darkness tremble, Yeshua, Yeshua. Ping. Bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break. At your name, oh come, oh come, me man, you and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here 
Until the Son of God appear. Rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O he. And see me from depths of hell, thy people stay and give them victory. Oh, love rejoice, 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 amen. Shall come to thee, oh, is right. Oh, come down, a spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night. In this dark shadows put to fly. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to Oh, he is right here. Uh, we did a song last night called King of Glory. Let's sing the first verse and the chorus. Open up your ancient doors, fling wide new gates, and let the King of Glory Come in and take his place. Open up your ancient doors, bring wide new gates, and let the King of Glory come in and take his place. We want to see him lifted high. We want to see you lifted high above all things and crowns. As King, King of Glory, for You are good, and we will sing and shout Your praise, King of Glory. He is our King of Glory. You know the last song we sang. It said, "The darkness trembles at His name." You know, darkness, all the things that plague us, all the things that attack us, they still submit to a crown, the crown of our Savior and Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua. Let's sing, O come, desire of nations. Oh, come, desire of nations, by in one the hearts of all mankind. Bid thou a sad division 
seeds. And be thyself our King of peace. Rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall count with thee, O Sing rejoice one more time. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to Rejoice in you, Father. Bless the rest of this time. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Robbie Christie, thank you. Uh, that was phenomenal. And it's awesome to gather together as this body of believers here in the month of December, as we're saying, celebrating Christmas together, celebrating the holidays together. Um, in doing so, me and Christopher have been praying, what should we do? How could we make this different? How could we make this more family-oriented in regards to our family as a church body? And so we feel like one of the best ways to do that is to share our stories, to share our testimonies. And so we're going to be sharing from... Uh, those that you, you see on the screen, those who've been leading out in the services uh, throughout the whole month of December. And we are doing so in telling you about our greatest gift that we received. You know, Christmas time is coming up. And I think always as a kid, every year, there was always that one thing that I just, you know, I had to have that one gift that was the thing that I hoped would be under the tree. And, uh, you know, it didn't matter if it was uh, G.I. Joe's when I was younger or last year or uh, He-Man or when I was into the, into the WWF and the wrestling, whatever it was, thought I was the ultimate warrior, Hulk Hogan, whatever it was. And then as you, you know, grow up and as a teenager and those things, it was always this one thing. And then it always seems like uh, over the past couple of decades, you know, here, here in the States, there's always that one item that it's like the must have you know, for Christmas, whatever that may be. And I'm out of the loop to know what that might be this year. But there is this something that we always look towards as been, this is the gift. This is the gift I want. This is the great gift. Well, I know for me, and I would say for all of you who have experienced this, my salvation, my relationship with Christ, the beginning of that relationship is the greatest gift, and it's the greatest ongoing gift. You know, I believe it's unfortunate when we talk about salvation, we talk about it in a static idea. This idea that we, we make this decision, we have this moment, we have this conversion, and that's, that's it. It just, that's, that's all that happens. You know, we're forgiven of our sins. We now have opportunity to enter heaven. We're a Christian. A lot of times how we look at it, we look at it static, and that's never the way it's presented in Scripture. Actually, you never see Jesus ending one of his sermons and saying, would anybody like to ask me in your heart, right? You don't see him stopping this, ending his service and saying, uh, hey, who would like to be saved today? Who wants to go to heaven? No, you don't hear that. You hear the 
phrase, follow me. The invitation that Christ gave was to follow him. Salvation, as Christ laid out, was following him. And so I know as I share my story, as Christopher shares his, as those share in the coming weeks, what you see is not just a moment and that's it, but it's an unfolding journey that's continuing right now. And I hope that's for you. I hope that you can look back and see uh, where you've come from. And it, it's amazing. So my story starts young. I had, I was just truly blessed. I, I saw my mom check in. And so, hey, mom, uh, I was so blessed to grow up in a, a family who uh, loved the Lord, who were Christians, who were faithful, who were in church all the time. And, and that was my immediate family, my grandparents, great-grandparents, aunts, uncles, just really a uh, whole family, and many of them involved in the, in the same church, and was there all the time, involved in the children's programs, all those things. And, you know, when I, I look back, I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful for this, the continual commitment that my parents and my family made to set that example, to lay that out. And so uh, I'm there all the time. I'm, I'm hearing the, the message. I was also blessed with some friends who were just who were solid Christians who came from solid Christian homes. One of my friend, one of my friend Caleb, uh, we were on the playground, like a third grade, I believe. And we're on the jungle gym, which was kind of the straight up jungle gym at that, that time. Uh, whatever that was meant to be. And we're sitting at the top. And I remember he turns to me and says, Jake, yesterday, last night at church, I was saved. I guess it was like a Monday. And this was Sunday. The, su the previous night he was saved. And he was going to be baptized. And as soon as he said those words, and this just wave just came over me. You know, I, at that time, I wouldn't know anything to say other than I was scared or I needed to do that. You know, now I understand that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That invitation to come and follow. And so that happens third grade. We go into the summer. I go to church camp and I'm there and this speaker's preaching and he's taught, gives that altar call, this time to come be saved, come and ask Jesus in your heart. And I know just something within me, I need to make a move. That I'm being called, you know, now looking back, it's the Holy Spirit's drawing uh, me, me to the Lord. But I was shy. I, I, mean, I can't believe I'm doing this nowadays. But I wouldn't make a move. I, I wouldn't do anything. So a couple more, more months rock on during that summer. And my pastor uh, blessed with a, a pastor who stuck around was at my home church basically my whole time uh, growing up until I graduated and through college he calls and he called him a birthday and he said happy birthday Jake this was a conversation happy birthday Jake have you been born again and he just went straight to the chase no, didn't, didn't cut anything out and I'm like oh crud now he knows that I need to do this and so that began a three-year journey of me every time I'm in the church doors uh, we, we had the traditional walk out. You'd shake the pastor's hand or get a hug, whatever that was. I found back ways to get out and to avoid that because I'm like, he knows. He knows I need to do something. I make me gripping the pew, whether that was at church or a children's event. And just every time encountered the Lord and even times away from church, any it was just conviction, continual conviction. Rocked on for three years. And finally, I'm at a children's event there sitting in these folding metal chairs, just finished my punch and cookies. And that same pastor comes to me and he says, Jack, are you ready to receive the Lord as your savior? And I, I was just, I was tired of that, that conviction and tired of not making a move. And he just laid it out for me. And so he takes me to his office there. I pray the prayer. You get up from there and leave. And I think in the week or two after that, I'm, I was baptized on Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, so it was probably no one but my parents there uh, for that baptism. But I remember just this conviction was gone. And all I knew at that time was, is this was something deep inside I knew I needed to do. I understood that I had sinned. I had done things wrong. And because of that, I could not enter into heaven. And it was only through what Jesus did on the cross that I could. 
So I needed to call upon him. I needed to receive him. However you want to phrase that. That's all I knew. And so getting up from that, what began to, all else I knew was, you know, you need to go to church. You need to say, say the right things, not say the wrong things, do the right thing. And just this morality thing is pretty much what I, I knew. And, and, but immediately, be, like, you can look back and just see this path where the Holy Spirit works in you and he begins to just remove things from your life. Even as a you know, 12 year old, 12, 13 year old, um, can look back and, and see that process beginning. But rock on about three years, three, four years. And I've shared this through several messages here at End Time Church because you, your story is just going to ooze out. I mean, you know, I think as we hear each other's stories, if you've heard any of us preach, that story has come out because that's us. That's how, how the Lord is working in us. Um, we had, had a lot of things going on at that, that time. I had a youth pastor who was really pushing us to experience worship, not from just singing songs about the Lord, but that we could sing and we could enter into his presence. We could uh, praise him. And you begin to use words like a relationship. We can have this relationship with Christ. You begin to walk with us in how to have a quiet time is what we called it, but a devotional time of praying and not just praying a, a list of things. Lord, I want you to do these things, uh, prayer requests. Uh, but to really seek the Lord and seek to hear him and learn to hear his voice. And so uh, that begins probably the process 15, 16. And in the midst of that, as I'm learning to have this relationship and my life is just transformed because when you go and you seek the Lord, as he, as he says, he will, you will find him. If you draw near, he will draw near to you. And he does. And you cross paths and you interact and you, you collide. And when you collide with the Lord, your life changes. And I just know for me, it began to say, you know, if I'm really experiencing his presence, if I'm really experiencing him working in my life, then this stuff is real. And if it's real, therefore, it should call me just to give all, all of me. And so it began this, this journey. And at the same time, I'm looking at and reading about the book of Acts, this sold out church. And then I'm looking at the church around me and the churches I knew, and we were far from that. And in the midst of that burden, I, I just felt this call. I was on a, a school bus, on a uh, school trip on the short bus and uh, had my big Walkman on, uh, big headphones and my big Walkman, uh, li listened to my mixtape and somewhere between um, Ace of Bass and Matchbox 20 or whoever it was at the time. I just, since however you know, not audible, however the Lord speaks to us, however that works. This is just phrase, Jake, I want to use you. And so I had things I wanted to do in life. So I, I thought, well, that means it'll, it'll make me successful in that. And then I can turn around and say, I did this for the glory of God. But a continual process went and it went on because, again, I'm slow and shy. And so I don't respond for about four months. Don't know what to do, but I, I heard pastors say, hey, if you want to surrender your life to the Lord, uh, and ministry come forward, you know, an altar call one time. And so I did that uh, one, one Sunday morning there at church, that same pastor met, met him there at, at the altar and just said, hey, I'm Lord's calling me to ministry. That was a phrase I knew. He turns around and tells the church, hey, uh, Jake's been called to preach and he'll be preaching next week. And so I'm freaking out, you know, what, what does that mean? And, but all I know is God is real. When you experience his presence, all I knew at the time, when you experience his presence, he's real. And if he's real, we need to just give him our all. We need to obey. And so I get up and uh, you know you're long-winded when your first sermon is 26 minutes. Uh, but just from that point, God began this journey of vocational ministry. But this continual journey, continual shaping, it, it seems like I will, Lord will lead me in a direction and things get smooth sailing and then it's a new path, a new twist. and after serving as a, a senior pastor, serving on staff for 12 years, I began looking out at my congregation and saying, this was two and a half years ago, looking out, saying, have I prepared them enough to remain faithful? That verse, Matthew 24, 10, just ringing in my ear that many will turn away. And begin really digging into end time prophecy and those things. And, and through all of that, felt this leading to uh, step away from that full-time pastor to be available to churches that maybe weren't tracking and teaching on. Uh, prophecy to to do that and so me and my wife we, we stepped out on faith we didn't know nothing like i had one gig lined up one speaking opportunity lined up and uh, that was it and we, we 
move, uh, no home, no job, nothing, move, move uh, and been at this journey for two and a half years, writing and, and speaking. And uh, in, in part of that journey, come across Christopher and uh, he gets me a call. I was in the, the middle of a fast, uh, a pretty long fast, just seeking the Lord, just uh, needing him to intervene in this ministry and, and to work it out. And I get a call about several days in and Christopher says, hey, I was mowing and I had this idea about a church. And my response to him is, well, I have to listen <laughs> because I'm in a process of seeking. So surely the Lord is in this and begin following that path. And that's how I end up here at End Time Church because our salvation is not a static thing. It's not just that one time decision. We're fixed for life and we're done. Rather, that's just us taking that step. And, you know, I know there's a lot of debate over the sinner's prayer and, and saying those things. But I, I know for me, it was helpful. But that moment, and it's a moment I can go back to and I say, in my pastor's office, on my knees, there at his couch. That was the moment I began this journey with Christ. But I, I believe salvation happened when I got up from that metal chair and I said, yes, Lord, I'm going in your direction. But it never ends. It continues. And so, you know, because of limited time, we're focusing on the point where the Lord really spoke to us, as I said a couple weeks ago, those calling moments, those profound moments, impactful moments in our life. But the greatest gift, fortunate to receive at age 12, which probably helped me bypass a lot of different things, but it doesn't end there, it continues. So I mentioned wrestling earlier. And, and mentioned, uh, I, I saw uh, Pastor Anderson said Jake the Snake. Oh, man, wasn't really a Jake the Snake fan, Ultimate Warrior all the way. Uh, but, you know, there's some tag teaming in uh, wrestling. And so I want to tag Pastor Christopher and, and bring him in. What, what about that segue? That's pretty smooth, right? That was yeah, awesome, actually. I'm an Ultimate Warrior fan, too. So. Oh, there we go. See? That's a, anybody, man, injury music. Robbie, you can get that. <laughs> uh, but this whole month, we we want to just share our stories. And Christopher, I've, I've not heard your testimony. And so I'm looking forward to this. Bless the Lord. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Yeah, Jake is uh, very, very precious to me. And I hope to you all as well. Any of you who've been with uh, ETC, as we call it here for the past couple of months, it's uh, he really wor works incredibly hard. And, you know, he has a young family as well. So keep him in your prayers. Um, for my uh, end, um, Christopher Manti here. I am married. I have two young boys, Joshua and Daniel. Uh, yes, because of the Bible. Um, and uh, we just try to live a normal life. I'm a, a very normal type of guy. I'd just as soon be left alone uh, at home every weekend. That's just what it, I would prefer. But sometimes God has other plans. And so my story begins when I'm eight years old, believe it or not. And um, I was raised in the Catholic Church. So, you know, nominally, you know the story. You know, you, you're told what, what happened and Jesus and Mary and Joseph and the whole thing. Um, but I'm going through the Catholic education, what have you. And I'm reading C.S. Lewis, actually, believe it or not, at eight years old. Um, the famous line, the witch and wardrobe book. The Lord... You, a lot of people might think this is silly, but I'm telling you, this happens a lot. Uh, the Lord used that book to directly speak to my spirit. And um, through the characters in it, if you know the story, it's a very famous story. So the lion and the story as lion is obviously an, an, a hero, heroic figure. And he's, he's, he, he hasn't done anything wrong, but yet he's killed. He's murdered for the sake of a boy uh, who has done wrong. And so he's the substitute for him. It's at that moment that it clicked and the Lord spoke to me and he said, I died for you. I know he died for mankind. He died for the sins of the world. But for me, even as an eight-year-old, I knew that I sinned and I knew I needed him and it was for me. And if, if I was the only person on the earth, he would have done it. It's the same for you. So, as of that time, everyone has, some people have a very dramatic salvation story or had this really tough, you know, evil, uh, godless life beforehand. And then God made this miraculous turnaround. I don't have that. Uh, he's just always been around. 
Um, and I'm so grateful for that. So um, soon afterwards, I'm obviously I'm still in school. I'm, I'm a third grader. And he keeps impressing upon me um, that, yes, I've come to save you, but you're not at the end of the story. You're in the middle of the story and that I'm coming again. So go learn about that. And that was my marching orders as a child. Um, and I would, uh, from that point on, I felt very called. Um, like I want to be a priest in the Catholic church because that's all I knew. Um, and it was pretty going pretty well. I would go not only every week, I would go every day during times like Advent, like we're now, or Lent before uh, Easter time. Uh, and so the church was open every day. I'm like, okay, I'll go. And uh, so I was very committed at that time. It's also the same time where you start to get interested in girls and things, and you find out that I can't ever get married if I'm a priest. So I'm like, you know what, Lord, I guess I didn't hear you right. I can't do that. So I kind of just put it on the shelf. I don't know what the deal is. I know what I know now is the Holy Spirit is uh, constantly with me. He's, he's tangible. If you know, if, if that's not too confusing, um, I, I, you, you look back over your life in these times and you know he's there. And you know now that it was him. So I was fascinated with the Bible generally. My grandparents had an old dusty one that was about that fat. And um, so I would read it and especially the real uh, crazy parts like Revelation and Daniel. I always loved them. I understood nothing, none of it, nothing made sense, but I knew it was great. Um, and I was also kind of a newsy nerd. I was watching like Middle Eastern news and events about what's happening over there uh, from, from around 12 years old. I have, again, very specific particular memories about events uh, on TV. Um, so that's kind of like weird, weird Chris Manti guy. Again, like Jake, very shy, um, reserved. I had a bad stuttering problem back then, believe it or not. Uh, but now... I'm on the radio. Uh, that's all credit to the Lord for sure. Point is, on through adolescence, you're awkward. Everyone's a little awkward. And then you get into your teenage years and you start dating and you have real attacks by the enemy for the first time, at least to me. Um, and as with a lot of teenagers, he comes with depression, suicidal thoughts, um, and all, every kind of lie, right? And the, the, the just a cocktail of bad things. Uh, going on in your body, in your mind, in your soul, you don't understand. Um, so I was given to depression and uh, thoughts of suicide. And uh, at 17, I gone through a bad breakup. And so I was at the point where I just decided this is it. I don't, there is no future for me. Um, it's just not going to work out the way I want. So I'm going to take my life. And no sooner, I'm, this is a Christian saying that, okay? I don't want to mince words at all. But no sooner had I decided that, and I can remember the, the scene in my bedroom, the Lord, uh, there's no other way to describe it than he hugged me. He embraced me. And from that millisecond, everything I felt, was love and every negative thought, every lie, uh, every suicidal thought, every depressing thought was gone like a vapor. And to this day, I'm 43 now, that thought of suicide has never returned. That doesn't mean we don't struggle here and there or times with, you know, that are tough or you know, that can lead to depressing things. I get it. But that is a deliverance. And that's why I'm very, very passionate and straightforward with folks who are struggling with these types of things that you can be delivered. Our God is a great God. There's nothing you can't do. Nothing. Okay. So from that point on now, I'm like, okay, God is real. I get it. Lord, I hear you. I feel you. I literally feel you. So I must get serious about this. 
Um, so I was very, very into, much into personal Bible study. The, again, the church really wasn't part of my life. Um, and this is when I started to, in the late teens and early twenties, I'm researching everything. I'm in research mode. I, uh, that's just my personality. Once I get zoned in on something, ask Jake or folks about this in anti church, once I get zoomed in on something, I'm really, really focused on that and I can't do anything else. Okay. Um, and I just get obsessed with it. So at that time it was prophecy, Bible prophecy. So I went to, this was a long time ago now, you know, 25 years ago ish. Uh, you went to the library. I don't know if you all remember that place. You, you actually took books out off of the shelf and you took them home and you read them. Um, if you kept them too long, they charged you money. So I took literally every single prophecy book off the shelf of my local library. There were there were a bunch. And uh, because this was hot back then, if you remember the left behind and all that stuff, that was really uh, kicking off and and becoming very popular. Um, And people, frankly, were getting saved through that message, through that Jesus could come at any day, be ready now, be ready now. So, you know, I was, I'm down with that. I'm ready now. Okay. Jesus is coming. This is awesome. This is what he told me when I was eight. So let's get to learning. Anyway, so I would check out all the books and lit... uh, Almost every single one, darn near every single one, had the same message. It was the same point of view, and it was what you would call today the pre-tribulation rapture. In other words, he can come at any time that the tribulation begins, and you're not going to be around for it. You'll be sitting in heaven watching heaven a party. So I figured, well, all the smart guys believe that. It must be true. So I was pre-trib from around 20 till 23 years old, about three years. And I wasn't only personally that. I told others that it was true. So I taught it. I was becoming more comfortable with the scriptures and defending points of view and all these things. I was an effective advocate. But by the time I was 24 years old, which is 1999, and I remember that clearly, I was post-tribulational. I had been taught by the Holy Spirit, point blank, yes, there are teachers who did this and that and showed me this and that, but it just didn't make sense anymore. So that's not tonight's not the night for that. Uh, but it didn't take long. And like I say, ever since then, since 1999, uh, I'm what you would call a post-tribulation believer. So now we're up to the year 2000. In May of 2000, something very supernatural happened. Uh, The Lord told me, I'll just come out and say, because this is what happened. He told me to watch for a major event that would happen between September 5th and 17th, 2001. And I'm like, okay, I got, you know, a bunch of days to watch for. I wonder, I guess the Lord's coming back. You know, so I built up a whole theology about this in that year and a half. Um, but of course, if you take right in the middle, in between the number five and 17, you get September 11th, 2001. And so I was sort of close to where I should have been, but a little off. So this is, this is very impactful. These those assumptions uh, about how I was wrong, and I ended up being sort of wrong about what I thought, uh, That's, but yet I saw the event. So I knew God had spoken it, but now I'm feeling incredibly low and guilty and, and in the wilderness, as we say, the dark night of the soul. Um, so at that time, I was not in any church, no church, family, no fellowship at all. I emerged from that eventually. Um, convinced that I should not be in a church or be in ministry, but that I should help elect Christians to government. And during this time was when I got married to my wife, when we had our first child, 2006. Um, so then the next year, 2007, my, now I have a baby and a, and a home and, and all these things are working out. I think, okay, Lord, you're blessing me in this. I must be on the right track. So I became a political volunteer and organizer. Um, from 2007 till 2012, a very specific night in 2012, election night 2012, where uh, I was actually the campaign manager for a United States Senate candidate um, who got destroyed that night, um, and the uh, presidential candidate who, by the way, I worked for several presidential campaigns in that time, um, the guy who was trying to defeat won a sweeping victory. And then God again spoke to me, and he said, son, let me remind you, you work for me. 
not for them, not for America, not for all these great things that you want to see. This country you think you're trying to rescue or save somehow, it doesn't exist. I exist. That was the message. So you work for me. So I said, yes, sir. Uh, from that point on, I poured myself and my family into a local church starting that Christmas Eve, 2012, um, and Wings of the Eagle, which you may know, this is the ministry that uh, you founded with me, uh, was done in August of 2013. And uh, there are reasons for that as well, it happened to center around the nation of Syria and the civil war there. And because again, some um, word that the Lord has spoken to me about Syria being the center of the flashpoint that would set everything else off. Uh, but what's the point of Wings of the Eagle? Ever since that time, it's three main issues. One, number one, connect the church. Number two, save Israel, preach the gospel to Muslims. Number three, that's it. That's where I want to focus. That's where the ministry is. Um, I, don't, I couldn't believe this when I'm putting my notes together, my thoughts down. I only met Jake face to face last summer. So August 2017, and uh, it was at a uh, Understanding the Times conference in Texas. And so ever since then, uh, it's been a whirlwind. There has been so many confirming signs and dreams and things. I had always been in secular work, by the way. I had never been in ministry full-time at all, even up to this point. But many confirming signs and things led to a job layoff for me in April this year. And that was fine because I knew God was in it. And so ever since then, I've been full-time uh, in ministry. And as Jake said, we had a vision uh, for this thing called End Time Church, which would um, hopefully draw folks from all over the world who either weren't in fellowship or were uh, frustrated at the lack of proper teaching on this, because we know we have to get prepared. The, uh, the wise virgins have to wake up. And so we began with the launch team in the spring. And uh, on June the 24th, I was actually formally finally formally ordained uh, as a pastor. So it was my local uh, church, uh, Iron Faith Fellowship. And uh, it's a great blessing to be there. This is the same church I was at in 2012. It's gone through some changes, but here I am. So I, this is what you would call a non-traditional path, non-traditional path. Um, Jake, uh, he's been to seminary, he's been to more than one. He has more than one degree in theology divinity, all these, all these things. And it's awesome. I love it. Even though God called me at eight years old, it took a very strange, winding, circuitous route back home to where he called me uh, at age eight. So that, in a nutshell, is my testimony. And I want to uh, exhort and encourage you that listen to the voice of the Lord, because he does speak. And he's speaking to his people. And he's calling out those who are not yet his people. I encourage you to listen and obey. Just, just do what he asks. And like, like Jake relayed and like I did, it's just as simple as saying yes. And he will provide and he'll do the rest. So uh, that is it, my friends. You know, probably only in time church is we're going to hear a testimony that involves someone's position on the rapture as part of the testimony. But it just goes to show how impactful that is. Because as for me, it's been a, a journey. When I, I wrote Spiritual Prepper, I was free, uh, pre-tribulation rapturist. Uh, and somebody reached out to me as soon as the book came out. They said, Jake, I want you to look through these verses. And uh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, after seminary, after school, after teaching in a seminary, the, all those things, I finally began to look at some of the, the verses. I mean, to read through it, I mean, I'm like, what? Where, where did I get what I had? You know, begin to walk through this, and, and eyes became open. And when when you make that shift, it changes things. It changes from the Lord's just here to get me out of trouble to the Lord allows difficulty, uh, but He works in it. He works in the midst of it. And so I, I think it's a huge change. And it also kind of piggybacks. I think if if you watch heard her testimonies, this is what I really love about working with Christopher here is most of the time when you hear a testimony, it's the Lord saved me and my life has been great. You know, it's, uh, and that's it. It's the stopping point. But for us, it's these continual journeys, these 
these paths that we're seeking the Lord, trying to stay on and there are moments of, of without clarity and we step off and we step back on and all, all of these, these different things, uh, discouragement, frustration, that is what we're all called to do. And so I want to encourage you, not just if you have felt a call to ministry, I mean, that was in my testimony, but that's for each of us. Uh, you should be following and should be shaping. You should look back and see a change. You should look back and see a progression. You should look back and you mentioned C.S. Lewis. And I think one of the impactful book for me uh, was Pilgrim of Progress, which also a, an old classic, this idea that we're on a journey and there's so many things that uh, can pull us away and pull us off that path. And we need to stay on the path and you stay on it. And I, I think, again, if you listen to the testimonies, it's a constantly seeking the Lord. He speaks. He says the sheep will know him, know his voice. Now, it's not a science. I wish we you could pick up a, we could do a, a downloadable PDF that had steps one through three of, of hearing the Lord. But it's, it's more of an art. It's more of a feel uh, with that. And so, but above all, when we talk about our testimonies, that starting point. And so I want to encourage you, if you've never had that starting point, maybe you were like me and you just, as, as a kid, I'm just, I knew something needed to happen. I didn't know what. Well, that something is, is to get past yourself, humble yourself, realize that we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And because of that, we stand condemned. Because of, of our sin, you make a look at your life and say, well, I haven't done this, I haven't done that. All of us have sinned. And all of that, that which we inherited, inherited just from Adam and Eve, all of that has separated us from God, has separated us from eternity. We can't do enough good. You can't attend church enough. You can't even give enough money to end-time church for your salvation. What about that plug? The donate buttons? Anyway. Uh, but there's nothing you can do other than to rely on what Christ did. And that can get frustrating. Living by faith is frustrating. Because it, it, it'd be so easy if it was just something tangible that you know that you did. Uh, but I do believe it's helpful to have that time you can go back and say, this is where I started my journey. And, and maybe for you, You've looked at it, and you, you you know you have this point of salvation, but you've not looked at it as a start. It's a start. Now start taking steps. Amen. And uh, as a follow-up to that, talk about nice segue again, compared to the Holy Spirit. Uh, we are, every Friday, uh, we started a ministry called, well, I thought it was appropriate to call it the Online House of Prayer, because it's basically what it is, uh, Roland, uh, Don Curley is uh, reading, uh, leading it, but that's not even leading it per se. It's just kind of opening up a room um, and going to pray, going to uh, hear some uh, quiet time, music, drawing aside, he calls it, which is very appropriate, um, and just get with the Lord and to hear him and to hear him. And that's a, a major part of prayer, right? It's not just talking to God, but hearing from him. And so um, we want to offer that to you. Okay, so Friday night's Again, uh, go to endtime.church, uh, click on or endtime.church slash OHOP, O-H-O-P, and that'll show you where to go to get in that, um, onto that. And uh, again, so that's every Friday, hope maybe forever, we'll see, uh, every Friday, and uh, please join us in that, all right? So I just wanted to make you aware uh, of that. By the way, uh, if you do uh, check out, we have a small store on, uh, if, if you're supportive of what we're doing and you want a t-shirt, you can go to endtime.church uh, and click on store. And then there's a, a shirt there. You can customize it. There's two options right now. Uh, however you want, whatever size you want, wherever you live, it's shipping is included. And they, not even the different countries, they'll send it right to you. Uh, the printer that we have uh, set up for that. And uh, we get a small, very small portion of that, but it's a great way to show that. Yes. It, all it says very simply, it has the logo on the front, but the back says, these are the end times. We are the church. That's it. Right. This is not some new thing. We're not some new denomination, God forbid, or not some new uh, church in that way. It's just a new way of doing this, of fellowshipping, of, of learning from the Holy Spirit, of, of ministering to each other and, and, and to the Lord. 
and to be there to be used because we're on the front lines of this guys, whether we like it or not. Uh, we're at war and uh, this age is coming to a close violently um, in the spirit and in the, in the fleshly sense. So we want to be who we're called to be. And this is going to be part of that. God is going to utilize these things. Satan doesn't own the internet. Okay. He doesn't own uh, the apps on your phone uh, or Facebook even. So get, you, let's take some claim for God uh, in this. Um, and by the way, uh, there is a, another option if you don't want to click and fill out a form to donate. There's a text option. You can just text from your phone. Text the word GIVE to 302-505-5433. Just text the word GIVE, 302-505-5433, and you can donate that way. Okay? Real simple. We want to make it as easy for you as possible. All right, guys. Uh, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, testimony night for Jake and I. I know I enjoyed delivering it to you. Robbie, do we have another tune lined up? I thought I saw something. I don't. I don't want to jump the gun. Yep. Uh, I, I, I think a, a redeeming version of "You Ain't Crazy" is uh, oh, sweet. Is, is in the works, dude. We yeah. Okay, so we have a theme song kind of. Uh, Robbie wrote this. It's an original piece. Robbie and Leah Herridge. A wonderful, wonderful song. I think it rocks. Uh, so if you're ready. I'm ready to hear this. It's called You Ain't Crazy, because that's kind of the theme of this little church we have going on. So, Robbie, if you're ready, take it away, my friend. All righty. Let me share the screen in case something glitches with the sound. Everyone can see the lyrics. There we go. All right. <laughs> Don't be deceived, I've been called crazy too. Do not be grieved, I have been slandered too. I know it's hard to live set apart. From a world that hates the truth to keep on believing Though evil keeps speaking lies over you You ain't crazy You ain't crazy Lift your head up, focus on me And you'll see but you ain't crazy And we continue to cling Continue to cling To what I told you long before Be willing to speak Though many will scoff and scorn I know it's time to live set apart From a world that hates the truth to keep on believing Though evil keeps speaking lies over you Cause you ain't crazy You ain't crazy your head up, focus on me, and you'll see. It's just a little while longer, and it'll all be through. You'll see me returning. For you like I promised to Yeah, that's the truth It's just a little while longer And it'll all be through And you'll see me returning For you like I promised to Yeah, that's the truth Yeah You ain't crazy. You ain't crazy. Lift your 
Put your head up, focus on me, and you'll see. But you ain't crazy. Praise the Lord. I love that. By the way, uh, he, Robbie has promised me. Now it's I can put this on video, so we have record in heaven and earth. Um, that uh, I get to play drums on that when you come visit. Is that is that still correct? Yes, sir. All right, there it is. It's a yes, sir. <laughs> Nobody can change that. It's done. Uh, so saying, there are there are hand drums too. So that's percussionists can. That's cool. Come on stage. Just let me have the kit. Uh, so, so what I'm referring to is we have a gathering actually happening March 1st, 1st through the 3rd, uh, in Wilmington, Delaware. So if you are anywhere, that's near the Philadelphia airport, by the way, it's about 20 minutes south of that flying to PHL. If you're close enough to drive, be my guest. Uh, we will be hosting a, um, the schedule's pending. Okay. But we got the first through the third, first, second, and third, uh, at an awesome church, which is. Uh, Pastor Randy Scott's church, which is where I go. Um, of course, it's, it's Christ's church, okay? Uh, but feel free to come out for some or all of that time. Uh, we'll get some hotel information out soon and hopefully get a block of, uh, of rooms um, for a discounted rate and all that stuff. Um, but we'd love to see you no matter where you're from, um, even international. We may even have some of those, which is beyond awesome. So I uh, just want to let you know about that. Make your plans. If you need to take off work, if you need to arrange vacation time, whatever you need, just to let you know that it is happening March 1st through the 3rd, uh, 2019, uh, In just make plans to get to Philadelphia, and then we'll get you in from there. All right. Um, I love you guys a lot. Jake, did you have anything else, or are we ready to, to dismiss these folks, give them their life back? Yeah, it's been fun. And so who we have coming up next week? Right. So next week, by the way, you see Robbie Harridge. Say hi again. Uh, Robbie, and hopefully Leah will be healthy enough. I'm sure she will be uh, to do this because they're going to give their testimonies uh, as well as our, uh, I don't want to say substitute, our, our, our other worship team, which is uh, the dailies, yep. uh, Taryn and Brian, uh, they're going to provide their testimony as well next week. So that is going to be awesome sauce for sure, just chuck to the to the hilt of of testimony. That's I love it, love it, love it. So that's going to come up next week for you guys. Uh, very, I know Robbie's story a little bit, and is very very powerful. Um, to say nothing of the other folks, I don't even know. But tune in, okay? Next week we're going to do this right here again, right here on Facebook and at the End Time Church Live page. Um, I love you all so much, and thank you, my brothers and sister, wherever she went. Thank her for me, Robbie. Uh, but thank you all for doing this and, and Chris Anderson and, and the rest of the fam uh, over in the chat room. So thank you so much. Love you guys. See you next week. Love you guys.